crosses are amazing, aren't they? They're so artful. Hi, my name is Jeff Wood. I'm pastor of First Presbyterian Church of Sebastian, and I want to welcome you to our worship service today. The crosses adorning the wall behind me came from our members, in some cases from their friends when they heard what we were doing. I love everyone, but I want to show you one that is near to me and dear to me especially. It's plain, but it's in this beaten metal, which is akin to Latin America. And I've been to Latin America many times, so it's near and dear to my heart. I especially like that in the center is Joseph and Mary beside the baby Jesus under the Bethlehem star. And what this communicates is that Jesus came, but he didn't just come, he came to die, to be a sacrifice for our sins, an atoning sacrifice. I find the two stories that he came and that he died to be especially meaningful. Let's worship this God together today. Now let me take you towards the cross, because that's what Christians do. We take each other towards the cross. Of course, I'm bringing you to the cross in our sanctuary here at First Presbyterian Church of Sebastian. But you know what I mean, that we are coming together to the cross of Jesus Christ. We know that all across the world, crosses adorn churches, and they do so because it is central to who we are as Christians. We know that once upon a time, Jesus Christ came, and he hung on a cross, and he died. He didn't just die, though. He died for you and for me. His life was an atoning sacrifice. He took on our sins. But we have these crosses as emblems right next to an empty tomb because he rose again. So he not only took our sin, but he gave us his life. He gave us the life that we want. And so together we worship him forever and ever. And I want to call us to worship this risen Christ today with the same words that we had last week. He is risen. He is risen indeed. I say it again. He is risen and say it with me. He is risen indeed. Let us pray. God, we affirm and thank you for your presence here today. And we ask that you and your risen power would fall upon each one of us that you would make our hearts peaceful, that our sins indeed have been forgiven, and that you have power to transform our lives and to raise us from the dead. We look forward to the new heaven and new earth where we can live with you and each other in perfect wholeness and living the adventure forever that you have planned. Now be with us now as we give to you our needs and our respect, our attention, our devotion, and fill us with your spirit that we might be your Easter people. For we pray in Jesus' name, amen.
Now let's worship God by looking at these resurrection images. Let your eyes be filled and your heart as well. We worship God. It sure is good to be together, even in this virtual way. Each week we keep trying things behind the camera to make it a little bit better, trying some gimmicks with fading in and fading out. It still feels pretty amateur, but I'm glad that we can connect and be before God in this brief little way. I hope you're well, and of course I invite you to call me if there's something I can do for you. When I lived in England, I was exposed to a television program by the name of Mastermind. It had many contestants at a time, and they had random categories, but the categories were very, very obscure and refined. For example, I think I remembered one in which they were asking questions that had to do with spices from Morocco used in the cooking in northern France from 1860 to 1870. So not spices from all over the world or all over Africa, but from Morocco, not used in cooking all over France, but northern France, and not from all time, but from 1860 to 1870. I didn't even know that you could know such things, let alone that there were people who knew them well. We come to a passage today where the disciples didn't even know that Jesus could rise from the dead, let alone that he could rise from the dead so well. Let's pray. God, we ask that you'd be with us in this brief moment of reading and meditation, using it to build our life in Christ, that we might resemble him and serve him. For we pray in that name, the name of Jesus the Christ, amen. I'm going to be reading from the end of the Gospel of Mark. We've been looking at Meet the Master in Mark. And I'm going to read at the 8th verse through the 11th verse. The women have come to the garden. They've encountered the fact that Jesus is alive. And it goes, this is the word of God. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. When Jesus rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. She went and told those who had been with him and who were mourning and weeping. When they heard that Jesus was alive and that she had seen him, they did not believe it. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth, and from his fullness have we all received grace upon grace. Hallelujah. Do I hear an amen? Amen. The first of the disciples came to the garden not looking for Jesus to be alive. They came completely full of grief and anxiety and with a job to do to complete the embalming process that they had begun when Jesus was taken hastily down from the cross that Friday afternoon. They had stopped because Sabbath had fallen and the regulations for Sabbath was the cessation of all activity. So from that Friday evening through the Sunday morning, they did not do any work. But now that sanction was lifted and they were back to finish the work that they had started. Little did they realize when they got to the garden that Jesus too was back to finish the work that he had started. He was alive. They came with tears in their eyes, and he came with love and victory in his. But not one of those disciples from Friday night to Sunday morning said to one another, you know, 
Jesus mentioned something about rising after three days, something about coming back from the dead. You don't suppose that that could mean that his corpse could become fully alive and functional again. You know, maybe we should just go check that out to be sure. Not one of them did that. Instead, what happened was that Jesus came and they were completely blindsided by his being alive. They didn't expect it at all. They didn't even know that such a thing could happen. This speaks to the authenticity of the New Testament record. If the disciples had been ready, if their response had been groomed in any way, shape, or form, it would have not been true to the way things really are. Paradigm-shattering events, by definition, catch us completely by surprise. We didn't and wouldn't have thought it. Many people think that the Bible is not intellectual. I'm reading a book right now by David Jeremiah, and just last night I read him, and he cited a PhD who for many years felt this very way. Then she met a doctor who invited her to church. She was surprised because she found him to be reasonable. But as she went with him and investigated the Bible, she was surprised at how genuine and intellectual it was. And so today I want to tell you from this passage that we read that the New Testament is reliable. You can trust this account and you can trust that Jesus rose from the dead. Mother Teresa once said, never let anything so fill you with sorrow as to make you forget for one moment the joy of Christ risen. And that is certainly true for this week following Easter with all of these pandemic conditions. And I would add to her words, never let anything so fill you with doubt to lead you to disbelieve the truth of Christ risen. Christ indeed has risen. That is the truth. You can rest your confidence, intellectual, and all of your personhood in this fact. Jesus is risen. Believe. This is the good news. Amen. We pray. God be with us as we get up and go from this place. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Now remember, brothers and sisters, wherever you are, Christ has put you there. There's something he wants to do for you there. And wherever you go, Christ is sending you. The indwelling Christ has something he wants to do for you there. Believe this. Rely on his power, his grace, and his love. And as you go, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. And now just before we go to the shalom, I want to remind you to be safe. If you need anything, please call me or the church. You can stay connected via our facebook.com backslash we love first Sebastian through our e-devotional and through our website. You can sign up for that e-devotional or online giving at our website, which is welovefirst.org. We have a Bible study via Zoom on Wednesday morning at 9 a.m. If you'd like to be invited to that, please contact the church and we'll see to it that you get an invite. Now, remember, the grace and mercy and power and love of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And all God's people agreed. And shalom. Mm -hmm.